If I give you three points like this, and if I ask you, can you find the area of the triangle you'll get if you connect these three points, uh, how do you think about this? Now, my first instinct was to check if uh, it's easy to find the base and the height. Because if it is, then I'll just find the length of the base and the height, and then half into base into height. I know how to do that. But over here, the sides are not like horizontal or vertical, so it's not very easy to find the base and the height. Okay, so that method is not possible directly. So then you can think, okay, maybe you can find the lengths of each of these sides. That was the second thing that struck me. Maybe I can find uh, this length, this length, and this length, and then use Helon's formula. I don't know if you remember it because it's it's that root of uh, s into s minus a into s minus b into s minus c formula. You can use that, and then you can find um, the area of this triangle. That will definitely work. Uh, I, I encourage you uh, to try it. I just did. The calculations looked so big that I was just going to... I realized that is probably not what this question's uh, trying to get us to do, which is to find the area of this triangle in somewhat a simple way. So if both of those are not possible, then what can you think of? The thing about coordinate geometry is that it gives you all the lengths, either horizontally or vertically. And the problem here is that we don't have uh, any of these lines being horizontal or vertical. That's what makes this question not directly easy. So then what can we do? I want you to stop right now and think, can you express the area of this triangle as some figures, some triangles or rectangles or something such that all of them have only vertical or horizontal sides? Can you think of that? Now, when I can't think of something, I'm just going to start drawing some vertical and horizontal lines and see where it leads me. Maybe I'll get lucky. Let us see. I'm going to draw a vertical line from here and then maybe a horizontal line from here. And uh, I can begin to see some pattern that I can form here. So if I connect these two, I see a triangle here. Then maybe I draw some more here, another one there, another one here. And now finally, I'm able to see. There it is. Can you see it? There is a rectangle over here which covers this entire region and there are these three triangles. So let me shade these triangles. Triangles. I have these three triangles whose area if I subtract from the original rectangle, this big one over here, I will get what I want which is the area of my, of my triangle. So I actually have my path ready. This should work because my rectangle has only horizontal and vertical lines in it. And my triangles have both. All of them have a base and a height that is either vertical and that, that's vertical and horizontal. So my job is done. Now my job is to find the lengths of these so that I can proceed. And finding the lengths when in coordinates geometry for horizontal and vertical is usually direct. So let's do it. So let me first find this big side of the rectangle. So that's going to be this entire side. And what is that equal to? You can see that the x-coordinate of this line is x3. I'm saying this line because all points on this line will have the x-coordinate x3. And all points on this line will have the x-coordinate x1. In other words, this length is x3 minus x1. x3 minus x1. And the next thing I'll need is the y-coordinate, this big line over here. So what is that going to be equal to? Similar story, y2 minus y1 y2 minus y1. All the points over here have the y-coordinate y2. All the points here have the y-coordinate y1. You can do something similar. It's a similar story for all of these other sides we need. What other sides do we need? I need the, this so that I can find the area of this triangle. So what is that going to be? That's going to be equal to x3 minus x2. x3 minus x2. This one here I will need. That is x2 minus x1 x2 minus x1. Uh, I will also need this one, this y-coordinate. That is y2 minus y3, y2 minus y3. And I will finally need this one, which is y3 minus y1, y3 minus y1. The diagram looks a little bit cluttered, but we have everything we need. So what is our next step from here? Our next step from here is to f write the area of the rectangle down first. What's the area of the rectangle? It's length into breadth or x3 minus x1 multiplied by y2 minus y1. y2 minus y1. This is the area of the rectangle. 
Now I need to subtract the areas of each of these triangles. Let me start with this one. So let's say I do minus, uh, minus half into base into height, right? So half into base, let me just take, I can take whichever I want as the base. So base is, let me take x2 minus x1, x2 minus x1, uh, multiplied by height. In this case, that's y2 minus y1, 2 minus y1. And now I'll subtract, say, this triangle, minus half into, for this triangle, the base is x3 minus x1, x3 minus x1, and the height is y3 minus y1, y3 minus y1. And finally, the last triangle over here, so it's 1 by 2 into minus half into base, base x3 minus x2, x3 minus x2 into height, y2 minus y3, y2 minus y3. Now, our, let me just move this a little bit over here, yeah. So now our job actually is to simplify this. Uh, and uh, the thing here is that even though this doesn't look too beautiful, uh, the final result we get when we simplify, a lot of terms cancel. So the thing you get looks uh, pretty beautiful, actually. Like, I was surprised when I first saw it. So pause this video right now and watch what happens when you uh, expand all of these terms and look at what cancel and look at what the final result you get is. I'm going to do it now. I actually don't need the diagram anymore. I only have to simplify this. I can look at the diagram later. So one thing I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this half outside. You know, I don't want to keep dealing with halves. I really don't like that. So I'm going to take the half outside. So I know my answer is going to have a half outside, which means that I can now start simplifying each of these. I'm going to do it in uh, each of these in one one line. And then let's look at what we get. So I'm going to put a two over here so that I've, I've forgotten these halves and I added a two over here. I know I'll have a half outside. So what is this going to be? Now, the way I like to think about such things is uh, I get very confused when I do uh, signs and this two and all that. So I'll first look at the terms, then I'll add the signs. So I'm going to have x3, uh, y2, x3, y2, uh, x3, y1, x1, y2, and x1, y1. I know these are going to be my four terms. Now I can figure out my uh, uh, signs. So all of them are going to have a two. So I know that all of them are going to have a two. And I know that um, the middle two terms are going to be negative because it's a minus b, right? And these two are going to be positive. So 2x3, y2, minus, minus, and finally a plus. So then I'm going to do this. Similarly, I'm going to say x2, y2 is going to be the first term. x2, y1 is the second term. x1, y2 is the third term. x1, y1 is the last term. Now I'll figure out the signs. Uh, there's a negative outside. Oh, I hate, <laughs> hate it when that happens. That That's the that's where I make most mistakes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add negative here. Uh, this would have been negative. So this is positive here, positive here, and negative here. Uh, I'm going to keep the same pattern going so that I know it's going to be minus, plus, plus, minus. So I don't have to think about it at all. Think about it at all. That's what I wanted to say. So x3, y3, x1, uh, let, let me, x3, y1, x3, y1 x1, y3, and x1, y1. There it is. And uh, again, it's going to be minus, plus, plus, minus. Similar story here, x3, y2, x2, uh, sorry, x3, y3, x3, y3, uh, x2, y2, and x2, y3. I need to move this a little bit so that we can see that. Yeah, x2, y3. And again, it's minus, plus, plus, minus. Now our job is to start canceling out because we know something's going to cancel out. This, this expression is really large. So um, we've seen that the final expression is actually quite smaller than this. So let me first see. x3, y2. Can I find x3, y2s here? I can find one here. So this two goes away and this entire expression goes away. Uh, x3, y1. X, I can see one over here. So this goes away and this 2 goes away. x1, y2, uh, I can see plus over here. This is minus, so this one goes away. Uh, plus 2, x1, y1, I can find 1, x1, y1 over here. And uh, I can actually find one more x1, y1 over here. So oh, this entire thing goes away. I like it when things start getting cancelled like this. Let me see if there's anything else. x2, y2. x2, y2, okay, I can see 1 here and a positive 1 over here. x2, y1, I can't see anything. x3, y3, I can see 1 over here. 
this goes. So finally, it looks like nothing else will go. So how many terms do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So uh, these 6 terms are going to be there in my final expression. But if you notice, it's actually much simpler than, the other, than, than what we started with. So I'm going to start writing this expression now. So uh, I'm going to take the x as common. Because I can see that there is an x3, y2 here, x3, y1 and so on. So x1, y3 is there x1, y2 is there. So I can take x1 common and write it. x1 into... So it's not like uh, there's a big reason I'm doing it. It's just that uh, I find that the final expression looks more beautiful when we do it like this. So x1 into what? y3 minus y2. y3 minus y2. Now what is the next one? I'll take x2 common out over here. And then I'll have... Uh, if I take x2 common, I'll get x2, y1 minus... Ah, it's here. Uh, minus y3. So y1 minus y3. y1 minus y3. Uh, plus, I'll take x3 common now, and I will get y2 minus... y2 minus... Oh, it's here. y2 minus y1. y2 minus y1. And there we have it. Now, I don't know about you. When I see this, I'm amazed that uh, what we're getting here is so much simpler compared to like what we get when we do the Heron's formula or any of those things. It's basically just the first coordinate, one of the x-coordinates, the difference of the other two, plus the second one, 1 minus 3, the difference of the other two, the third one, 2 minus 1. So this is your expression. And uh, notice that you may sometimes get a negative value for this entire expression. But the area of a triangle can't be a negative. So what we do is we take the absolute value. You'll calculate this entire thing and take the absolute value. So why you get the negative is that the order in which we, we choose the points may sometimes be different. So you'll get a negative value. So take the modulus or the absolute value of that to find the area. And in the case where the three points that you've chosen don't even form a triangle, they form a straight line, the three points are collinear, we say, there you'll get this value to be zero. So getting zero for this means that the three points are collinear.